This episode, The Random Nature of Art, is the first in a video series that goes along with James Parker's book, Generative Art, Algorithms as Artistic Tool. The book is about generative art. This is something that most people, even most artists, don't know very much about. Uh, the idea is simply, uh, an artist normally when they paint, uh, they'll go to a blank canvas and they'll start. Uh, with generative art, you start with a plan. You describe the painting or the drawing that you wish to do in great detail as an algorithm, a computer algorithm. The computer then takes the algorithm and renders it. So the, you don't have to actually draw. The artist doesn't draw or paint. The artist designs and creates. The computer does the dirty work. Uh, this means, of course, that an artist has to have a bunch of new skills. So, uh, in this book, uh, we attempt to give you some of those skills in a very practical way. So the first chapter is about randomness. And the idea is to simply explain the concept of randomness in art generally and in generative art specifically. So if you look at the figure in, on the Haystack series by Monet, you see uh, the same subject, the same painter, the same perspective on the uh, scene painted four different ways, four different lighting, four different times of year. And we get four quite different results. So this is the kind of thing we're talking about with randomness. You cannot really reproduce the same image and you can use various aspects of the painting, the picture, the image as random. Colors, lines, positions, uh, scale even as random components. Art that pioneered this concept of randomness include Picasso's Girl with the Mandolin, where all perspectives are visible at the same time. Dadaist Jean Arp, who dropped bits of paper onto a surface to take a chance on what might happen. And Paul Clay, who thought a line didn't need to have a goal, the artist has to give up some control. At the, in the, at the end of the chapter, what we see is some uh, measurements, if you like, of how random some things are. And I focus here on color and shape. And there are a number of different things in a picture that can be random. And so uh, we notice that, A, if, if something is completely random, then uh, it's not interesting to people. People don't like completely random things. If it's completely organized, people aren't interested. There is a peak, somehow, of randomness. It also corresponds to a peak of interest from the viewer. And so this can be illustrated by drawing ra various kinds of random images, measuring them and showing that this one's interesting, these ones are not, and trying to explain why that is. In the next part of this video series, Jim Parker discusses the relationship between generative art and computers.